the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you to pour forth the grace of your Holy Spirit. Open our eyes to see your beauty and your glory. Great love for us. thing on my faith journey was uh, I went to a Roman Catholic primary school and our head teacher um, during an assembly sometime he said to us talked to us about prayer and he said prayer is like a telephone conversation with God and he'd say get on that telephone to God and being six or seven years old I took this very literally so I thought okay so when you make the sign of the cross that's like dialing the number <laughs> So I used to go, hi God, um, had a nice day at school today. How sweet. Um, yeah, thanks that I got to go to the park. Um, sorry for fighting with my brother. And I just used to chat to God about things. And so the sisters had a, had a secret plan. So they actually dressed me up almost like a nun. I'm just looking like, okay, like the dirty. So, okay, I had a kind of habit already on. But um, there was something beautiful um, they transmitted to me the love of Christ and I well I was nine years old and I thought I want to be like them. It's the parish church and elementary school and uh, a connection and the sisters uh, the Flushan sisters taught at the school so uh, from my earliest years I remember uh, being asked by my mother to go deliver a dessert to the sisters or she would say uh, she was going to drive them uh, to do grocery shopping because way back when they didn't have access to their own cars. And so the sisters were very much a part of our lives. On our way to Banyas. Um, and, and that's the work we do, particularly with adults, but actually as we grow, we're still have snow on. We're only six at the moment, so we're very young, so please do pray for us. Um, but we hope to do what This is the water, headwaters of the Jordan River that flow out from underneath this rock at Caesarea Philippi where Jesus said, you are rocking on this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell right there will not prevail against it.
and you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Oh, there's a rock here he's talking about. See, with the backdrop. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What are the gates of hell, by the way? I just told you that cave was a place that they threw the sacrifices into the gods down below. The ancients called this the entrance into the netherworld or the gates of Hades. So why do you think Jesus came up here and said the gates of hell will not prevail against it? Because there they are. The ancients believed that any big cave or water that you'd go into was an entrance into the netherworld, was an entrance down to the gods below. So Jesus says these are the gates of hell. Guess what he's referring to? We're, we're right there. And then in 1051, they sealed that faith. No one can join. join. And I can tell you that the uh, community of the Druze today in the world, which are the largest uh, group on There goes the goat yogurt, a lebna. Goat yogurt first goes on the bread, and a little olive oil, and then the zata herb. Then it's wrapped up tight and put on the grill to get warm. And there's the sandwich. Okay, what do you think of your sandwich? You got the falafels. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Superb. You got one. You like me. yours? You know, it's like, it like a dinner to me. It's a big one. <laughs> There's everybody eating their falafels and their Drew's bread. This is Drew's bread right there. That's the most. I've never seen you eating the pickles and olives. My story is a little different than most religious that you will come across. First of all, well, being a religious is my second vocation because my first was to be a wife and mother. And uh, when I was in my late 40s and I found my, my home was empty, God had taken away my husband and my, my two uh, daughters were grown and and starting their own families. And I had uh, had a wonderful life. I had I had everything really had accomplished all the things that I had set out to do. They're out in the world fishing. He helps them to bring a catch of fish in. The, all the apostles bring the nets in and the fish, but then it's Peter himself who drags the, sh the net up onto the shore of eternity and puts it at the feet of Jesus. The fathers of the church saw something very significant in that. The, earth, the, the shore is heaven, that's the world. The net is the church. And it caught a hundred and how many fish? 153. I always used to say 157. Janet says there's 157 Heinz ketchup, and that's why you say 157. <laughs> it's 153. So that's how I remember now it's 153. And Jerome, St. Jerome, who translated the Bible from Hebrew and Latin, I mean Greek, into the Latin Vulgate, which became the authoritative Bible of the church, he said that the reason there's 153 fish is because in that time that it was known to be 153 different languages, tribes, nations, and tongues. 
So what does that represent? The whole world. That the church, the apostles have gone out into the whole world, out in the water, and they have collected from every nation, tribe, and tongue, people from every, and they all got them in the church, and the apostles all together brought them up. But then Peter, who has been given the keys and the primacy, his job is to bring it all up. This is the church of the primacy of Peter and the, also called the Mensa Christi, the table of the Lord. Inside there's a rock where Jesus fed them after cooking the meal breakfast on a charcoal fire. Over there is the Golan Heights where Jesus cast the uh, demons into the pigs where we just were. In the Sea of Galilee where the fishermen run out fishing and Jesus called them in in the morning after his resurrection. He gave them breakfast up here and these are some of our pilgrims here enjoying this spot. Our group is uh, learning from Amr about the importance of the olive tree, a symbol of Christianity, and the history of this church here where the Lord multiplied loaves and fish. And I'm going to take you in to see what the group is going to see in just a moment. This is the beautiful church of the multiplication of loaves. And we're going to be coming in specifically to see this rock, which marks the place where Jesus multiplies the loaves and fish. And there's a 5th century mosaic there of the loaves and fish. It's still the original, and I'll show you a picture of it more up close. 